interestingly, mm. we're mm. sitting here in the hall, and in two days' time, Captain mm. Sensible is actually oh, yeah. Yeah. performing here, wow. which is <laughs> sort of rather a nice, a nice tie-in. I know to to the fact that um, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, as well as running the label, you're doing, yeah. you're still doing the, the sleeve design, and uh, yeah. I'm one of my abiding memories of coming to yours mm. was seeing the sleeve to the white rabbit single I think mm. set up in your cellar that's right I was thinking wow that's, yeah. that's cool um, so mm. so that you and I believe you brought the damned in here for a pint we did <laughs> we, I've been I? working on the um, Machine Gun Etiquette album in my house at Liverpool Road out the back in fact what we, we, we built a sort of a little it, it, it didn't really come across on the sleeve but we actually built a 3D new, little New York using photos and pictures of them like um, like stand ups just in, in amongst this picture and then we um, as, it, as we did the, the session we did things like we had big giant scissors coming in and cutting their heads off and then we set fire to it so it was a it was a, it was a fantastic session it didn't really come across in them you can't really tell it's a bit like the Sergeant Pepper sleeve you can't really right. tell that it's all cut out right. it just looks like a flat picture but never mind that's what we did and then Angie made f food and we all sat around and eating then we came down here for the evening so there was Rat and Dave, and, and um, D Dave's favourite record, by the way, was 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 uh, um, Hev Underbar, you know. Um, Dave, he loved that, go. absolutely loved that record. Dave Vaney. Oh. He, <laughs> was, he, he was, I, I think <laughs> I must have played it to him that, uh, you know, that night or something. I remember he just absolutely loved it. So uh, we all came down, and Captain, um, we, we, so we walked through the door, you know, and there's the damned, and the heads turned like they would, you know. And um, and Captain was really put out because they didn't have enough real ale. He liked real ale. <laughs> yeah. And I was saying, well, it's not even punk, is it, real ale? <laughs> <laughs> you just have a, a lager like everyone else. But he was being a bit... Um, uh, yeah, it was yeah. funny. He'd been a bit rock star. I've got some nice photos of um, of the horn from the time. Oh, right. From the outside that we, we just took for... Um, I think we were going to do a Christmas card or something. I remember right. we took the photos anyway. Mm. And it does look completely different. It was... Uh, it was a great little punk horn. The horn was yeah. just, no, just, absolutely. I don't know what, mm. it was amazing, wasn't it? It was fantastic. Yeah. Down to Bob, I think, really, wasn't it? Mm. The, the yeah. guy that ran it and his wife, Jan, but Jan has died, mm. unfortunately. But Bob, he kept just this side of the law most of the time. But, you know, it, they just used to have lockups every Saturday night. As I worked here as a barmaid. Mm. Oh, right. Because so, okay. I was just here for everything, everything. Oh. I can remember Paul Young being here and um, Bob had, grown these slugs, made them deliciously plumptious slugs right. and he got them in a jar with blotting paper in the jar and grass and stuff growing and, thing, and these slugs which he'd been cultivating for two or three weeks fattening them up and he said to these guys anyone eats a slug and I'll give them 10 or 20 pounds, quite a lot of money in those days and uh, I think it's Paul, it was, I'm not sure if it's Paul Young or if it was the keyboard player, he, because the drummer just went Swallowed it. Ooh. The keyboard <laughs> player was like, Ooh, nice looking slug. <laughs> and I swear to God, he sat and he chewed it, he stuck his tongue out with a slug on it. It was disgusting. But you know, he really made a thing out of it. And that was just typical of Bob because he was he was just very, very funny. <laughs> That's great. Do you remember spitting? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. He'd stand yeah. on stage and the more they liked you, the more they'd flop at you. Just can you imagine that? Right. <laughs> I know. <Right>. I, mean. <laughs> I can remember coming off stage at um, the California Pool Room yeah. in Dunstable, and Pete's guitar, it had hanks of spit. Um, so, and then, uh, as, as well as, obviously, the, the, the playing locally, um, Tanya Hyde played at uh, the Hope and Anchor and mm. other London gigs. So how did you, you find, how did you get into town and who did you play with up there? Um... Well, I kind of managed the band, so I, I was only got the gigs. I was working um, in a place where I could just sneakily use the phone all day, so that's what I did, really. Mm -hmm. um, we uh, did the Hope and Anchor. I don't know who we played with there. We did um, some universities. Uh, we did the Rock Garden with the Stranglers. We did, oh, did right. the Stranglers. A lot of people seem to play with the Stranglers. Right. I think... Um, the tea set might have yeah, been that was, yeah. And in fact, they went on to produce the the album, which never got released. But oh right, you call them, didn't we played um, with the slits. We played with X-ray specs a few times, as far as I remember. 
Um, we played with the woman with the hair. Um, Susie and the Banshees. Susie and the Banshees. Oh, okay. Susie, well done. Susie and the Banshees. <laughs> That's good from a description. Yeah. Like, <laughs> the woman with the, the hair. <laughs> That's where we used to play a lot. Oh, of the okay. And the marquee, they were, yeah, yeah, yeah. we used to like playing there. Yes, the vortex. I remember yeah. the bodies played the vortex. That's where we did our yeah. last gig, actually. Mm. 100 Club? Think think 100 club? No, I don't think we ever played the 100 Club. There's mm. a picture of us on the internet, on the poster for the 100 Club. I don't mm. ever remember playing mm. it. Mm. I don't think so. Oh, right. And then you released uh, probably a, a gay club anthem. Yeah, I hear it. In it's hair. Well, so who approached... Who? How did you end up doing? I think it was Brian, Brian Marshall. Yeah, Brian, Brian. Yeah. It was. It was more or less a Brian Marshall production. I think so, yeah, yeah. You know, um, from start to finish. 